Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Cohen. Today I'm going to talk to you about strategies for ACT English. Now, ACT English is broken up into two types of questions. There are grammar questions and there are rhetoric questions. The grammar questions test grammar rules and they test the same rules over and over, so it's very learnable. The rhetoric questions test how the passage is uh, they test the passage organization and passage topic. For the grammar questions, you just need to learn the set of rules they test, and then you can do really well. You'll be ready for them, you know, going into the test. So you can find these rules on my blog, the SAT ACT blog, um, and elsewhere. And as you study them, I really recommend using flashcards. So when you learn a new rule, you can make a flashcard for it, and then write an example of that rule that you come up with. Coming up with the example will help you to better process and understand the rule, and will also help you better remember it. As always, make sure that you also do time practice sections um, from official practice tests. This will help you practice um, and get comfortable with the rules you're learning, um, and you'll also start to recognize common patterns on the test, which will help and uh, trap answers. Even though the grammar questions are ostensibly testing grammar, you still need to read for meaning because oftentimes they're asking what grammatical form best expresses a certain subtle nuance in the meaning. So don't lose track of what each sentence and paragraph is saying when you're dealing with the grammar questions. It can be difficult to read um, both for grammar and meaning at the same time. So if you're having trouble with this, one helpful strategy is to read each passage in its entirety before you tackle the questions. After you read the passage, maybe jot down in a short sentence or two the main idea of the passage. And then what you can do is go back, read through it once more, and at this point answer the questions as you read the second time. This way you you know you can easily get a better sense of the passage and you free up some more mental bandwidth for when you're um, working on the grammar questions because you're not having to constantly think about you know, what's the meaning of everything. A common mistake a lot of students make is to look at the question and just look at the underlying port, uh, portion of the passage that the question's asking about. And this is really bad because the questions are very context dependent. So this might work for a few questions, but it's not going to work for other questions. So it's really essential that you read the entire uh, sentence that and paragraph that that underlying portion of the uh, passage is is found in. Now, context is especially important for the second type of question, the rhetoric questions. Rhetoric questions ask about um, generally organization, passage organization, and passage topic. These questions are often um, marked by the question number will appear in a big square box. Uh, not always, but often. So if you see that box coming up in the passage, circle it and make a special note of it. Because as it approaches, you want to pay extra special attention to the meaning and organization of what you're reading, because that's what the question that's upcoming is going to ask about. Some questions ask which is the best sentence to insert into a, a certain part of the passage, and they'll give you a couple of sentences. Um, and in this case, you want to pay really close attention to what the question says. Underline any key words in the question, because usually the question will be looking for a very specific uh, detail or piece of information. And the correct answer choice will be the answer that um, very specifically does what that question is asking. It's all about paying attention to the details in the question. Some questions ask if a sentence should be included in a particular paragraph or not. So you want to ask yourself, does what this sentence, does the topic of this sentence gel with the topic of the paragraph as a whole? Um, if it does, the sentence should be included. And if it doesn't, it shouldn't. So you have to decide if the sentence is on topic or off topic for that specific paragraph and for the, sorry, this one specific thing that paragraph is talking about. 
Now, these questions give you four answer choices. Two say, yes, it should be included because. Two say, no, it shouldn't be included because. So first, figure out if it should be included or not. And then just cross out the two. And then just look at those two answers and cross out the other two. And try and articulate in your own words why it should or should not be included. Um, try to do this before looking at the answer choices. This will help you avoid falling for any trap answers. Other questions ask uh, which sentence should be used at a particular point in the passage. On these questions, you want to look for the sentence that forms the best transition between what comes before that sentence and what comes after that sentence. And it should be a logical transition. Some questions ask, what would be primarily lost if this sentence were removed, deleted from the passage? You want to ask yourself, what does this particular sentence add to the paragraph or passage that no other sentence does? That is going to be the answer choice. And again, try and put it in your own words before looking at the choices. We've talked about questions that deal with uh, whether or not to insert a sentence or what sentence to insert or not, you know, uh, include in a passage. There's also questions that talk broadly about sentence and paragraph order. And what will happen is a sentence or a paragraph will be presented out of order. And then the question asks, where in the paragraph, where in the passage should this go? You know, put it back, put it in the right order, basically. So you want to figure out what that sentence or paragraph is saying. What does it contribute to the passage that no other sentence or paragraph contributes? And then you want to figure out where it fits in. And a good rule for doing this is, is that general information comes before detailed information. So if it's some, if they're introducing something general for the first time, you want that to go before other parts of the passage where they talk about that thing in detail. On the other hand, if they're talking about something in detail, you want to make sure that that comes after the part of the passage where they've introduced that more generally for the first time. The last major type of rhetoric question asks about the passage topic or main idea, and it says, suppose the writer had you know, wanted to do X, did she accomplish her goal? And you have to choose yes or no and say why. So again, first figure out if, you know, yes or no, did they accomplish the goal? Is the passage primarily about this topic? And then just look at those two answer choices and try and put the reason in your own words before looking at them. So how do you figure out the main point of the passage? Um, well, it's, you know, it's what Every paragraph, basically, is uh, the purpose of every paragraph should be in some way conveying that main point. So ask, what does every paragraph seem to do that's the same? What is every paragraph in the service of saying? And the main point is often explicitly mentioned in the first paragraph uh, and or the last paragraph, often especially in the last couple of sentences. You can also look at the passage title to get a good sense of what it's about. If you found this video helpful, please like it or subscribe to my channel, which will help me find uh, more people looking for this type of information. Thank you.